Picture perfect night for baseball. Welcome to Lindsey Nelson Stadium in Knoxville, where the sun is shining and the fifth ranked Tennessee Volunteers stamp the end of a 15 game homestand, welcoming in the Colonels of Eastern Kentucky to town for this midweek tilt. Welcome in everybody, Mike Patel alongside Kaylin Arnold and our wonderful crew with you tonight in Knoxville. So great to have you with us as Tennessee and EKU Tangle. Xander Seacrest, the senior lefty, gets the ball for Tennessee tonight. Kalen making his fifth start now of the season, and he's coming off one of his best outings in his career, certainly the best one this season. He had a fantastic outing against the Screaming Eagles, held them to one run, and had a career-high 10 strikeouts. And the lefty went five and two-thirds innings, did not get a decision in that one. That was a game that ended up going tight where the Tennessee offense came to life late. So Seacrest gets the ball for Tennessee facing an Eastern Kentucky team that's trying to get back to its winning ways. The Colonels 2-14 this season, but they have tested themselves early in the year. Tennessee is the fifth different ranked opponent that Eastern Kentucky is facing this season. So for Seacrest on the hill, no record this year, 5.4 ERA. And now his fifth appearance, fourth start of the year, 10 innings of work. Has given up six runs, two walks to 15 strikeouts. Kalen mentioned 10 of those coming last Wednesday night against Southern Indiana. Beautiful night to be at the ballpark. Fans are filing in. Spring break here locally on campus and around town, but there will be close to 5,000, close to a packed house here tonight. And the batting order for Eastern Kentucky, Colby Ott. We'll lead it off. He's followed by Tate Nunnally and Connor Davis at the top of the order as we are underway with a breaking ball outside. Uh, hitting 344 this season. Healthiest batting average in the starting nine. As he fouls it back, two and one. See, Chris has done really well in his appearances so far. We saw him last midweek game against the Screaming Eagles, and like we said, had a high career strikeouts with 10, and honestly, had just a phenomenal outing all around. He really came out with a lot of confidence. He was kind of strutting his stuff out there. I really enjoyed watching him, and uh, he really held it together. He held it down for his team until they were able to kind of pick things back up and then was later relieved by Kirby Cannell. But he did fantastic. Yeah, it was a really good start for Seacris, one that Tony Vitella said was nice to see. Seacris has a career sub-3 ERA, but – Good to see that in the start of this season, providing some stability in the back end of the Tennessee rotation. And he picks up right where he left off. High cheddar, strikeout number one. Great, awesome pitch actually by Seacrest. I, I love that up in the zone, getting the swing and miss to start off this game with a strikeout. So the base is empty, one down as Tate Nunnally climbs in. The lefty freshman Nunnally coming off of a great weekend against Wright State and really a great Sunday. That was a game that ended in a football score as he skies it to center field. Hunter Ensley circling in, two down. <laughs> Easy one, two so far for Seacrest. It's exactly how you want to start off the game. Defensively for Tennessee, Dylan Dryling in left, Hunter Ensley patrolling center field, Kavaris Tierce out in right, Billy Amick at third, Dean Curley the shortstop, Christian Moore at second. Robin Villeneuve gets his first start at first base this season as that has bounced to Amick who goes across the diamond and retires Connor Davis. Perfect one, two, three inning in the top of the first for Xander Seacrest on the bump as the balls come to the plate. Hey, 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 hey. 
On to the bottom of the first here in Knoxville. Fans continuing to file inside Lindsey Nelson Stadium as this potent Tennessee offense comes to the plate for the first time. It is the left-hander, Bradley Stewart, who gets the ball for EKU. First career start for the freshman. And he fires a strike, 97 off the left hand to Christian Moore. He's going to be facing a very potent lineup against these Tennessee hitters with the ability to hit the long ball, make things happen, get on the base pretty easily. Ball and a strike to Moore in the leadoff spot, hitting 365 this season. The 1-1 one -one to him popped up and a foul. Fifth appearance for Stewart this season on the Hill. Just his first start, though, of his collegiate career. No record. ERA is above eight, but just three and a third innings of work. Has not given up any hits. But three runs have scored against him. And two walks to five strikeouts. Home with a 2-2. Well, Kalen, it's one of those days where the freshman's going to grow up some facing this Tennessee team, a team that's won 15 straight games. They're defending their home turf here tonight, and it's a team where offense is contagious. Definitely. This team does such a good job at passing the bat and situational hitting. Definitely going to learn some big lessons here as a freshman, but obviously his coaching staff has a lot of confidence in him putting him up against this lineup. Count has run full. Stewart downhill with the payoff. Swinging bunt in front of the plate. Chevy retires the first out. That's tough. I'm not sure if Moore even really swung. It looks like he kind of just turned and the ball hit off the bat. So one quick out as Dalton Bargo, the sophomore, climbs in. And 
fouls the first pitch back. Bargo starting in the lineup at DH today. No Bill, no Blake Burke for Tennessee. So Robin Villeneuve over at first and Bargo in the DH spot as he takes strike two. So it's Bargo followed by Billy Amick, Kavaris Tierce, Robin Villeneuve, Dylan Dryling in the heart of the order. Then Dean Curley, Cannon Peebles, Hunter Ensley rounded out for Tennessee. It's weird not seeing Burke's name in the lineup. He's such a staple for this offense. But Bargo, he can he can do some damage too. He's done really well the past few games. See another full count. Yeah, just the eighth start of the year for Bargo, but he's gotten a lot of playing time, coming a lot in pinch hit scenarios, off the bench late for Tennessee, so he's hitting a healthy 367. And he works a walk. Now back to the third baseman, number 11, Billy So one out base on balls. That's the other BB, Billy Barrels, comes to the plate. Billy Amick, red hot start to his Tennessee career. The Clemson transfer has made himself at home on Rocky Top. And he takes ball one. I think he's done a little more than made himself at home. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the, the king of the castle a little bit with nine home runs already, batting 365. Shimmy's out of the way of 95 at the shins. I'd say that's an okay start to a new place. 365, nine dingers, and yeah, 21 ribbies to lead this starting lineup tonight. Feels like Stewart's very aware of who he's facing. I was just about to say, he's being very cautious about what he's throwing. Amick throwing balls way inside. Comes in there with the strike, but not trying to give him anything too sweet that he can get the barrel to. Green light count, 3-1. Inside and caught a piece of Amick. So Billy Amick hit by a pitch for the first time this season. And Tennessee in business, two on, one out in the first. I do think, yeah, that, gosh, I think that gets him right on the kneecap. That's one of the worst places to get hit. It's like right on the bone. We'll need an ice pack ready in the dugout. So Amick takes his lead off of first. Bargo advances to second. Vascovaris Tierce takes a breaking ball outside, ball one. Tierce on a tear, 15 game hitting streak coming into tonight. 4-0-4, almost 20 games into the season. See this steady die to sliders. Four home runs and he's driven home 14 as he finds himself in the cleanup spot tonight. Squibber through the left side. Off the cap of the bat, Bargo rounding third, scores standing up. It is a spinning RBI single for Kavaris Tierce, and Tennessee jumps in front.
We just talked about how awesome this team is at passing the bat and situational hitting, and that's the perfect example of it. It doesn't always have to be the big home run to get things going. The walk by Bargo, then the hit by pitch against Amick, and then Tears just hits it right there in the 5-6 hole. Amick up to second, so still two on with just one out. And now a one nothing Tennessee lead as Robin Villeneuve takes ball one upstairs and a quick jog out from head coach Chris Prothro. He does the mound visits and will make the pitching changes. Prothro has now had some time up in Richmond, year number four for Chris Prothro. And well, it's an Eastern Kentucky team that has played well. They've won 67 games over the last two seasons. That's the winningest two-year period for the program since back in 1989 and 1990. So they certainly have some talent, want to compete in the Atlantic Sun this year and try and earn that auto bid to the postseason. But Kaylin, maybe the conversation here, just trying to settle down the freshman. I'm sure, yeah, coach going out there, trying to get him settled, trying to get things rolling again, telling him just to attack. I mean, they started him for a reason, so he's yeah. he's got to be able to go out there with a little bit of confidence. Fires a strike right out of the meeting, so it's one and one to Villeneuve, who takes strike two. Robin Villeneuve hitting 364 this season. The junior college transfer from Quebec. Villeneuve coming off of last game with a grand slam over left field wall. So we know that he can hit well with runners in scoring position, but he will be put away by the freshman. First strikeout from Stewart. That's a nice pitch up in the zone, right on the hands and Villeneuve just right underneath it. So two out for Dylan Dryling, who takes a called strike. Dryling's been a really bright spot in this order for Tennessee, producing at a high clip five home runs this season for the sophomore. And he's hitting 365. Ball gets away from Chevy. It's a free 90 feet for everybody. Two in scoring position for Dryling. Bradley Stewart, 30 pitches into this first inning. There's been a lot of traffic, but just a pitch away from minimizing the damage. It's 3-1. It is ball four to load the bases. This is not really who you want coming up <laughs> with runners in scoring position, bases loaded. Dean Curley, his bat is on fire right now. The freshman player of the week. Yeah. That is Dean Curley, true freshman from California. Bats with the bases loaded in the home half of the first. And 1-0 to Curley is grounded to short. Ott. Can't handle it, flips to second in time for the force out up the middle. So all that commotion, Tennessee sends seven players to the plate, has the bases loaded, and the Vols are able to scratch across a couple.
On to the second at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. A gorgeous night to play ball in Knoxville. one nothing Tennessee. Second run did not count for the Vols. The force out there up the middle. So it's a one-run lead for Xander Sechrist, who begins with a strike to Max Williams. Four, five, and six in the order. Two up for EKU. Nothing in two. See, Chris is such an efficient pitcher. He does a great job of getting ahead in counts, and he throws all of his pitches with conviction. You can tell he's fully committed to the pitch when he throws it. There's, there's no guesswork when it comes to it. He's 100% confident when he's firing that in there. Doesn't waste a whole lot of time when he's ready. The one, two. Just misses. And the count even on the cleanup man. Williams, the DH. 333 hitter for the Colonels. Has turned into an everyday starter. It was a role player last year. This EKU team, they're 2-14 and record-wise, but they've played some really good competition. Yeah. They've played Auburn, Vanderbilt, Louisville, Kentucky, and now Tennessee. So, A couple bounces on the right side as Moore shuffles to first for the first out. Yeah, they're not backing down from any competition. They've played a lot of tight games. They held Kentucky hitless through seven innings in their second matchup with the Wildcats, had the go-ahead run, come to the plate against Vanderbilt in the ninth. So certainly not going to back down. No, definitely not. And I think this coaching staff is doing this on purpose. They're playing these yeah. really high-quality teams, competitive teams, so that – their guys are ready for conference play. They're going to play the best at the beginning of the season. They're going to learn their weaknesses. They're going to learn what they need to do to be better. And then they're going to be ready when their time comes. One ball and one strike on Boone Chevy. And the count two and one. Chevy, the transfer from Jefferson College. A 
That's a souvenir. That was dropped. <laughs> <laughs> that pitch from Seacrest came in at 70 miles per hour, and you could see as it left his hand, it looked like it was almost floating. And, I mean, compared to the previous pitch, which was 87, that's a 17-mile-an-hour difference. That one in at 88. And Chevy just able to spoil it. You make a great point about Xander Seacrest. A lot of people you see just 88 and doesn't necessarily wow you, but that incredible change in speed has got to make it feel faster. Well, it's completely messing with the timing of the hitters. I mean, they don't know what's coming in at what speed, and you slow them down to speed them up and then speed them up to slow them down, and, you know, it all goes into the pitch calling. And Xander Seacrest, I mean, has been extremely effective so far in the pitches that he's thrown with those those off speeds. Hmm, I don't really know where that missed. That one coming in at 89. Yeah, he was three steps into his K-strut around <laughs> the mound. Yeah, that was, that was a nice pitch. Well, it's called a ball, so the count runs full. Here's the payoff. We'll try it again. And then he's also effective because it's coming from the left side. Right. So he's got a lot of things working for him here. See, Chris, the senior from Buford, Georgia, has strikeout number two. Nasty pitch by Seacrest. Almost breaking some ankles there. Gets, <laughs> <laughs> gets him turning on that pitch hard. It's a guy that's oozing confidence on the bump as Larrell sends it into right field. Base hit. Two out single for Miguel Larrell, the first baseman. First hit of the night for Eastern Kentucky. Brings up DJ Sullivan with one on and two out. And he takes ball one. Sullivan in the seven spot, 2.15 to start the year. Does have six doubles. And has driven home four, coming off a really good conference stretch of last season. Yes, pretty pitch. That pitch coming in at 78. I love a good lefty on lefty matchup. Sandra Seacrest trying to work around the two out single. Rail back safely at first. Neither of these teams steal a whole lot of bases. But with two down, trying to keep them close over there. With more of the second baseman deep in the hole. Third of the way into right field, and Curley shaded up the middle at short. They've got the runner pick. Over to Villeneuve. Curley applies the tag for out number three. So Tennessee gets the final out of the half inning on the base pass and carries a 1-0 lead to the home second. This time for the game of the best of the little league represented by the YMCA. You think you know who that is? And you are code off the board now. 
One lucky fan with the correct answer wins two free tickets to this weekend's Dana Shake concert in the Food City Center. Another freshman into the game for Eastern Kentucky, Josiah Erd, the right-hander, takes over. Just his second appearance of the season, no record. And a Sterling triple zero ERA for the right-hander. As Erd comes in and will face the eight, nine, and one spots in the order here for Tennessee. It's interesting that EKU has decided to throw two freshmen now against this lineup. Just throwing the youngsters in there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the show, kids. It's the switch hitting catcher, Cannon Peebles, who fouls away the first. Yeah, Erd's lone appearance this season came back in the middle game of the Oakland series, end of February, threw just seven pitches in relief, did not record now, gave up one hit. So really, this is his first meaningful big appearance of his freshman season, one and one on Peebles. It's a big deal, maybe trying to get them ready for conference play. Yeah those nerves out of the way and he will come away with a strike there. That was a nice pitch. And he gets a punch out. Back to back breaking balls. And he picks up the first K of his outing. Nice off speed. Oh, I love the drop, the break on that pitch. First strikeout of his collegiate career. High and tight to Hunter Ensley in the nine spot. Hensley hitting 244 this season. Making his 12th start of the year, but pretty much an everyday player now for Tennessee as that is yanked foul. Homer in that Sunday win against Illinois. Yeah, Ensley really hasn't had the offensive year that he's used to, but did have that big home run on Sunday, and he really kind of sparked things for the team with that hit. And, Coach Vitella said, you know, he's been itching to go and trying to get things moving, so he took advantage of that, and that hit definitely centered him a little bit more. It's almost like kind of got out of the way, and now he's able to just focus and breathe. And that's it well. In the air, deep right field, carrying and gone off the scoreboard. Hello, Hunter Ensley. 2-0 Tennessee. Hunter Ensley starting off with another big home run to get things rolling. 
in the bottom of the second for the Volunteers. Pitch just left too sweet over the middle of the plate, and Inslee just rides it off the scoreboard. So he's homered in back-to-back -back games. Second long ball of the season for Hunter Ensley. Eighth run batted in, and he gives a little one-out jolt into this Tennessee offense as it turns back to the preseason All-American, Christian Moore. 0 oh for 1. It was an excuse me swinging bunt his first time up. Popped up. Right side. LaRail, two down. Now Bargo in a similar situation yeah. last last at bat with uh, two outs and he led off with that walk get things rolling and scored the first run into the gap in right center Nunnally in and makes the catch in the shadows of the scoreboard Side retired in the second, but the Vols get another run. Solo shot from Hunter Ensley. 2-0 Tennessee. First pitch of the third is fouled back off the left arm of Xander Sechrist back to work for Tennessee. Gets DJ Sullivan again who gets a new life after he had two strikes on him when the final out was recorded on the base pads in the second. Just looks like a guy in complete control right now. He does. I mean, he is so confident right now. I love it. I love the composure and, I mean, just <laughs> absolutely killing it right now. He is not backing down. He's been throwing that pitch really well. It moves inside, you know, to righties and away from lefties. 
beautiful pitch. Gets Sullivan, just doesn't even know what to do with it. Third strikeout for Seacrest as Ron Franklin takes a strike on the outside corner. I mean, this is a guy that is just filling up the strike zone right now in Xander Seacrest as the center fielder Sullivan digs in. He's in the shadows. Seacrest from the sun misses one and one. As a coach, you have to feel so confident in your pitcher when he's out there just, just shoving, just attacking the zone, getting ahead in counts, exuding that confidence that is definitely contagious. I mean, his infield, his teammates, they feel that confidence. You know, the pitcher 100% controls the emotions of the infield. Tears underneath it, two out. When your pitcher is confident, you feel confident because you know that they're in control. They feel good. Well, two quick outs here. Recorded by Xander Seacrest. Picking up right where he left off, coming off a career outing. Been nearly six innings of work, 10 strikeouts against Southern Indiana last week. And just motoring into midseason form. As that's in the air to center field off the bat of Anger Adrianza. Another quick one, two, three inning. Ensley retires the side. Seacrest has faced the minimum through three in Knoxville. It's time for a walk on three innings. The first hit by the balls will get one on the channel. Walk on to the car. The bigger that hit, the bigger the hit. Tonight, our balls are playing for Shannon. Josiah Erd back on the hill as he faces Billy Amick in the meat of this Tennessee order. Three, four, and five. Second inning in relief for the freshman who did give up the solo homer, but came in otherwise. Pretty comfortable out there. Got some weak contact. Solo shots, I mean, do you want them to happen? No. If they do happen, is it the end of the world? No. You can always come back from a solo shot. Second time that Amick's been ahead. Three balls and no strikes. And he takes strike one. Got hit by a pitch his first time up. Caught him right on the inside kneecap. They're definitely trying to pitch around him, respecting what he's able to do. Because he does things like that, a laser that one hops the left field wall. Amick cruising to second for a lead off double. Fourth two bagger of the year, Tennessee in business to begin the third. So hard to pitch to a hitter like Amick. So strong, just mashes that ball down the left field line. Doesn't take any cheap swings. Never really trying to just spoil one. No, every time he swings, it's with a purpose. Uh, 
nothing and one on tears. RBI single that bounced through the left side his first time up, so that hitting streak continues for Kavar's tears at the plate. That now extends to 16 straight games. And the on-base streak, one longer than that, 17 in a row for the man in the cleanup spot for Tennessee. Amick up to third, 90 feet away. Hitters like Tears are some of my favorite to watch because yes, they have the potential to hit home runs, but the consistency is what I love. I love when hitters step up to the plate and you just know they're so clutch. Like they're gonna get a hit, they're gonna get on base. It doesn't matter how, they're gonna do it. And like you said, I mean, 17 straight games where he's on base, that's incredible. In the driver's seat on the 3-1, Tears torches it. Will it stay fair? No. That's a long strike. I know when I was pitching and someone would hit a ball like that and the crowd would just go crazy like, oh my gosh, I'm like, yeah, it's a strike. <laughs> <laughs> and the payoff is ball four. So they're on the corners, nobody out here to begin the third as Robin Villeneuve climbs in for Tennessee. Oh for one, Villeneuve struck out his first time up. Back pick. Everyone's safe. That was almost dangerous if yeah. that ball would have gotten away. Amit could have easily scored. Healthy hack, that's empty. Villeneuve also takes big swings. Yeah. He also, like Amit, swings with a lot of power, a lot of speed. Ahead here, two balls and a strike. Heard the freshman trying to settle things down. Middle infield at double play depth. Right, mark two and two. Strike three, looking. That pitch a little off speed gets Villeneuve frozen at the plate. Oh my gosh, the break on that ball. I mean, that starts up at his head and then finishes at the belt. Pretty filthy bender off that right arm. First down is recorded. And now the Colonel's a double play away from getting out of this inning. 1-0 on Dylan Dryling. Walked his first time up. Tailing foul, tailing out of play, and does find the seats.
Erd, the freshman from Toledo, Ohio. As the runner goes, the throw sails to center field, and that is a free run and an extra free base. Amick in to score, tears over to third, three nothing Vols. That's what happens when you put pressure on the defense. I know that is so difficult as a catcher when you have speed on the base path like Tears. He sails that ball to center and, I mean, Tears heads up, takes off to third and Amick scores easy. Down the left field line, slicing out, foul. It feels like those are the kind of mistakes you can't have in the midweeks against the number five team of the country. Tennessee, one of those teams, you give them an inch, then we'll take a mile and then so. 100%, you have to limit those little mistakes, those errors. You basically almost have to play a perfect game. Yeah. <laughs> you can't give up anything extra. 3-2, hammered to right field and deep. Nunnally at the wall and Watches it fly. Dylan Dryling with another blast, his sixth of the year. Dryling has been so deadly recently at the plate. Oh my gosh, he just absolutely slams that pitch. Rockets it. Didn't have a whole lot of distance, but it had the height for sure. And that spells the end of the line for the freshman Josiah Erd. New arm coming into the game for Eastern Kentucky, the junior, Brock Blanton. Takes over on the bump as Tennessee has opened up a 5-0 lead here in the third inning. New arm into the game for Eastern Kentucky. Tennessee has scored three runs here in the home third and taken a 5 nothing lead. The junior right-hander, Brock Blanton, takes over on the hill. Blanton making his sixth appearance of the year all in relief. 0-2 this season with a 7.71 ERA in four and two-thirds innings of work. He was a relied upon arm out of the bullpen last year. Was inside the top five in terms of appearances in the A-Sun and will try to steady the ship as he faces Dean Curley. EKU looking to the experienced pitcher as a junior, having a lot of experience on the mound to get them out of this jam. Down by five in the bottom of the third. Only one out. A 
stretch specialist. Blanton's 1-1. One, one. Wave and a miss. 1-2 and two on the freshman Curley. 0 for 1, reached on a fielder's choice. That ended the bases loaded threat in the first. On the 1-2. Not close, two balls and two strikes. That's a half inning. EKU was a pitch away from getting out of. Double play away, and Tennessee has certainly made those costly mistakes count. Definitely, and I mean, that goes back to what we previously said. You can't make those mistakes. You have to have almost like, you know, a perfect game defensively, offensively, battling, trying to make things happen. Xander Sechrist has done a fantastic job so far of keeping the hitters at bay. But when that's happening and you know that their pitcher is doing well defensively, you got to be able to pick it up. That is the fifth free pass issued by the Colonel pitching staff tonight. Four walks and a hit by pitch. Puts Curley on first, one out in the third. Infield shaded up the middle against Peebles. He takes ball one. 0 for 1, Cannon Peebles struck out his first time up. The transfer from NC State was a freshman All-American for the Wolfpack last season. Hit 352 to lead that NC State team. And Kalen, he's come in as the everyday catcher. I know you pitchers, you guys are finicky about your battery mate, but he has created this immediate chemistry with a deep stable of Tennessee arms and really solidified things there behind the plate. That's so important. Like you said, pitchers, they, they can be picky about their catchers. That ball gets away. And you're picky for a lot of different reasons. Sure. It, it could yeah. be skill. You know, you may think that one catcher is better than the other. Um, could be personality. Maybe you guys mesh well together. Maybe you don't. I know for me, I always wanted a catcher who had a big presence behind the plate. Um, somebody who was really going to lead the infield, make me feel like they had my back 100% knew how to talk to me when I was frustrated. And Cannon Peebles does that really well. He's done a great job of learning the personalities of his pitchers and being able to accommodate. I think a good catcher is like a shapeshifter. They can mold into whatever their pitcher needs them to be. That's something Cannon talked about, that Bowling Green series, Tennessee had a game where they used eight arms out there in the final game. and. Peebles out there the whole game afterwards, he said, yeah, I mean, look, it wasn't that tough. Came into the fall, you got to know them, you get to know their stuff, and I trust them, they trust me, we all want to win. So, so far, it's been a pretty formidable force. Draws the walk, so that's two issued in relief by Blanton. And it's quickly 2-0 on Hunter Ensley. So the tandem on the other side, it's Chevy that comes out to talk things over with his experienced arm. Anything jumping out at you early in this appearance? Free passes, getting behind in the count. Throwing a few too many balls, I think, right now. We talked about not giving up the mistakes, the little errors, and those types of things. Walks, balls, definitely something that you don't want to have. Yeah, that was the 12th pitch, just the third strike. That's come off the right arm. Ensley, solo homer his first time up. Two and two. So the conversation worked, whatever it was. Two strikes out of it. Right. Got to be a mini fist pump as a catcher back there. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. 
Well, when you know your pitcher and you know what they need from you, yeah. going out there can make all the difference in the world. Runners both go, and they'll take the bags uncontested. Curly to third, Peebles to second on the double steal, two in scoring position with a full count to Ensley. I've loved the def or the uh, base running game that we've seen from Tennessee this year. They've been so aggressive on the base paths, taking extra bases and. That's to third, and Davis fires across the diamond. So that's the second out, but because of the double steal, a run comes in and scores, and Tennessee stretches its lead, 6-0. Another RBI for Ensley. Now back to the second baseman, number one, Christian. Top of the order, Christian Moore with a runner on third. Strike one called. Moore 0 for 2. Both balls in the infield. One on the ground, one in the air. Didn't love the call, Christian Moore, but maybe clipped part of the outside corner there. One and two. I didn't really love the call either, and I'm a pitcher. Usually I, I'm, you know, more of a pro pitcher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more of a give it to the pitcher, but that one wasn't for me. He's worked it even, two balls and two strikes. Four runs across this half inning for Tennessee. Brock Blanton on in relief in the middle of it. Trying to yield just one run as Cannon Peebles takes his walking four-step lead off of third. 2-2 Two -two to Moore, well outside. That's another thing that I'm seeing from these EKU pitchers. Their misses aren't competitive at all. Like when they miss, it is way off. And I, I think that's attributing to to these long counts and then the walks. They're, they've got to throw more competitive pitcher's pitches. 3-2, and the dirt ball four. Case in point right there, Kalen. Another free pass issued by this Colonel Staff. As more waltzes to first, they're on the corners. And that guy is looking for some offense in the stands. Dalton Bargo will deliver. No, walks aren't very exciting, are they? <laughs> <laughs> Bargo, rocket to right field, rolling towards the wall. Peebles in standing up. As Moore goes corner to corner, an RBI single for the DH Dalton Bargo. 7 nothing falls. RBI singles are very exciting. Pitch moving down in the zone, and Bargo does a good job of taking his barrel down to it. Hits it right in the gap. So the inning continues as Bargo picks up his first hit of the night, his 11th RBI of the season. And excuse me, swing foul ball to Billy Amick, who's now the 10th batter of this half inning. What camp are you in? When did when did Tennessee bat around? Was it Bargo, the ninth <laughs> batter, or, or do you have to get to Amick? That's, this is such a tough situation to be in right now because it's like, okay, we have two outs. We don't want to load the bases. We want to get out of this inning, but we can't pitch to Amick. Yeah. So what do you do? One ball and one strikey. Started it all with a double down the left field line earlier this half inning. A 
as Blanton tries to close the book on the third. His 1-1. One, one. Rockets right off his leg. Over to first. It's a foot race. LaRail gets Amick for the out. Oh, man, a loud way to end the inning. Oh, my gosh. I know that that hurts so bad. I mean, that was right to the ankle. The ball, the Vols lead 7-0 going into the bottom of the fourth. All right, you heard it there from the crew chief, Tyler Simpson. Tennessee is going to challenge the call. Each team gets two challenges throughout the course of the game. Tennessee is using its first. The call on the field was that it was an out over at first. It has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn that. Take another look here. But again, the call on the field was an out. A well, Laurel beat Amick over there on the baseline. Just tough to tell if the tag was placed. Right, that's what I was trying to see is, does the glove make contact with Amick or is it just kind of beside him right. <laughs> as he's reaching towards him? Yeah, it's got to be clear cut that it does not because the call was an out. Great look here and seeing if there's any sort of separation. So we're seeing exactly what the umpiring crew is seeing, and here comes the call from Tyler Simpson. Okay, they confirmed the out. Falls down to one challenge remaining, but a five-run third. We've played three here in Knoxville, and as we move on to the fourth, Tennessee holds on to a seven-nothing lead. We've played three in Knoxville. Lights flipped on at Lindsey Nelson Stadium as the fourth is underway. Xander Seacrest 
back to work on the bump. He's faced the minimum through three innings. Just one hit, a two out single back in the second. And now that was recorded on the base pads to end the inning. So the top of the order, that's Colby Otts. Guys at the center field, Hunter Ensley. One down. Those are my favorite. One pitch, one out. Keep the pitch count low. Seacrest, 39 pitches in four innings of work now. I mean, that's that's legit. <laughs> yeah, that's been cruise control for Seacrest and maybe with SEC play starting this weekend, hitting a pitch count that was imposed on him. Not totally sure, didn't talk to Tony Vitello before the game, but Tony Vitello is out there, which means a pitching change will commence for Tennessee. A wonderful day on the mound for Xander Seacrest Kalen. He went three and a third, three strikeouts, no runs, one hit, did not walk anybody. That's a new arm. Comes into the game for Tennessee. It'll be Chris Stamos, the senior, taking over. Chris Damos into the game for the Vols. Another lefty, the grad student from Pasadena. Now in California, Stamos making his fifth appearance of the season. Hasn't pitched in game action in two weeks since that midweek against High Point. So he comes into tonight, appearance number five, 2-0 record, 2.57 ERA in seven innings of work. And Tate Nunnally is the first man he faces, so he begins with a strike. Stamos pitched really well against High Point. Came out of the game because of some bicep soreness, so they wanted to shut him down for a little bit, make sure that he was good to go. Two strikes to Nunnally. 0 oh, for 1. He flied out to center field his first time up. Stamos ended up getting the win in that high point game, despite just the one inning of work that you mentioned. To short. No trouble for Dean Curley. Two down. Coaching staff going to take any kind of soreness, any kind of injury very seriously before conference play. Want to make sure that all of their arms are good to go and definitely want to have a deep bullpen that you can go to when you're pitching against 
SEC lineups, which some of the most dangerous lineups in the country. That conference play begins this weekend. Tennessee heads to T-Town on the road against Alabama. Crimson Tide up as high as number 12 in the polls, depending on which one you check. Tennessee as high as fifth in the country. 0-1 is inside. One ball and one strike to Connor Davis in the three spot. Davis grounded out the third his first time up. Davis, the senior, was an everyday starter last year for the Colonels, but 21 games into the year suffered a season-ending injury. Back and healthy as he deposits that to center field, but it hangs in the sky. Stamos retires the two batters he faces in relief. The Vol staff has faced the minimum through four. It's a 7-0 lead at home. New pitcher into the game, the fourth of the night for Eastern Kentucky. The left-handed junior from Lexington, Sir Isaac Milburn. I don't know if he's a sir, it just felt like <laughs> it fit there in front of that one. But Milburn making his ninth appearance of the season, one of the most used arms, has had some starts this year. He started four games, but now settling into that relief role. Owen three has been dinged up a little early in the year, has given up. 19 runs through 10 and two-thirds innings of work. We'll try to settle things, though, as he comes in with a clean slate in the fourth. And Kalen, really the story for this EKU staff has been the free passes, and Tennessee's taking advantage. Big part of that 7-0 lead. 100%. The free passes, just throwing too many balls, not throwing competitive pitches when you're ahead. And then also a few other mistakes, some pass balls and overthrow. Yeah, great point. Some of those self-inflicted errors were quickly compounded by a couple of Tennessee home runs. And the Vols hold on to a 7-0 lead as the heart of the order bats in the fourth. Cavaris tears. A one for one, an RBI single. He's also walked and scored a run. Healthy hack, that is tipped into the mid. Milburn last pitched on Sunday, just a third of an inning in that track meet against Wright State. It was a game where Eastern Kentucky put up 16 runs, but was on the losing end, 21-16 the final. As Tears torches it into right field and deep. Adios! Solo shot for Kavaris Tears. Home run number five on the year for Tears. He's such a dangerous hitter, can do just a variety of different things. He sees the ball so well. 
doesn't swing at junk, so he gets the walks, but then also consistency at the plate, gets the hits, which is why his batting average is 426, but then also can crush the ball and hit home runs. Yeah, pretty impressive. He was hitting 404 coming into the game, and now it's 426, four innings into it. Hard to get better when you're already hitting over 400, and Tears is doing just that. Those are the hardest hitters to pitch to, yeah. honestly, the ones who have great pitch recognition. So don't swing at the junk. Swing at the good stuff. And it's like no matter what, you feel like you just can't get them out. Like, sure. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Ball and a strike to Robin Villeneuve. Over for two, a couple of strikeouts for Villeneuve. in his first season here on Rocky Top. He was a junior college All-American, one of many fresh faces coming in and making an immediate impact for Tony Vitello's team, one that made it all the way to Omaha last season, certainly have their sights set on the College World Series once again. A lot of baseball till you get to that point, though. Opposite field, base hit. First of the night for Villeneuve. This offense is so deep. I mean, you know, you don't have Blake Burke in the game who usually kills the ball, but that's okay. Robin Villeneuve can step in at first, and then you have Dryling who can also step in in situations. You have Bargo who can step in in situations. And then, you know, you have the ridiculous numbers of Kavaris Tears and Billy Amick. There's no give in this Tennessee order. You mentioned Dryling. He's in the plate now. Already has a homer tonight. Two-run shot and has also drawn a walk. Lays off of it. One ball and one strike. Coach Vitello said that Dryling makes it a little bit of a challenge to make up the lineup because they want him in there so badly, but there's just so many guys on this team that can <laughs> hit. And, uh, you know, he said he's able to hit it to the deepest part of the park. He's explosive. He said he tends to have a little bit of a, a flair for the dramatic, <laughs> <laughs> which is always fun, makes the game a little bit more exciting. But he said he's very stoic. He doesn't really wear it on his sleeve, which is what makes it even funnier that he's kind of this calm, cool, and collected guy, but plays with a little bit of flair. And he earns a five-pitch walk to put two on with still nobody out for Tennessee. He's made it hard to take him out. Definitely. I mean, he has been on fire just the past few games. Doing all kinds of different things, hitting offensively, defensively. He does a great job in the outfield. Meeting on the mound as Chris Prothrow comes out to talk things over with the entire EKU infield. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. Tennessee has scored in each of the first three innings. A run in the first, a run in the second. It was the crooked number five came across in the third. And already one run home here in the fourth. Pinch runner as Colby Backus enters at first to run for Dryling. So Dryling's day is done. Two on, nobody out for Dean Curley. Curley 0 for 1. It's also walked in, scored a run. Healthy tip into the mid. How do you settle things if you're Milburn on the mound? Honestly, like, when you're in this situation, you kind of just 
<laughs> have to say, you know what? I'm just going to give it all that I got. That's Our it well to the gap. And one hops off the wall. It's going to be a really long single. Now some late movement on the base pass. Villeneuve slides in. And after all that, Curley ends up at second. It's a nine-run cushion. Nice heads-up base running by Villeneuve. Seeing that ball ricochet off the wall. Outfield kind of fumble it around, so he's able to just turn on the wheels and score. As a pitcher, I'm sure things are feeling like they're moving really fast right now and like things are spiraling out of control. That's why the mental game, that side of it is so important. You've got to be able to calm yourself down. If you're kind of going into like a, a red light zone, you've got to be able to get yourself back into that green light zone. Most pitchers do that with a routine or with um, breath work. There are different things that go into all of that, but got to be able to just flush it and move on. The Colonel's still looking for their first defensive out of the fourth. Peebles yanks it to third. Davis across the diamond in time. Buchanan Peebles picks up an RBI as Backus comes in to score. And Tennessee has put up a 10 spot. That clears the way for Hunter Ensley coming up to the plate, and he put a jolt into this Tennessee offense. Oppo Taco in the second. After hitting his first home run last weekend, kind of just got things out of the way, comes in and hits another one today. And rips it up the middle. That is rolling to the alleyway. Curly trotting home. Another ribby for Hunter Ensley. He's driven in a run every time up. Three RBIs today and 11 across for the Vols. Pitch ripped right back up the middle. Looks like there's gonna be a pitching change for EKU. End of the outing for Isaac Milburn. He's responsible for Ensley on first, as Tennessee has pushed across four quickly in the fourth. New arm coming into the game, 11-0 Volunteers. Number one, 
The six foot five frame there of Ryan Yates, the senior right hander from Oskaloosa, Iowa. Third year at Eastern Kentucky by way of Kirkwood Community College, and he faces the top of the order with one on and one out here in the Tennessee half of the fourth. Yates on the hill making his sixth appearance of the season, fifth in relief, 0 and 1 with an 11.81 ERA. A lot of wild pitches as yeah. well from the EKU pitching staff. We saw Billy Amick take one to the kneecap earlier. Christian Moore almost getting hit there. Moore waits on the breaking ball, way high in the air, slip and foul, and out of play into the concourse. One ball and two strikes. More 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. Side. Full count. Ensley takes off from first as the pitch is hammered in the air, right center field and carrying. Good bye. Christian Moore mashes a two run homer. Tennessee just continues to pack on the runs. They've put their foot to the gas pedal and it doesn't look like they're letting up anytime soon. Sixth home run of the season for Christian Moore. That pitch was just right down the heart of the plate. Christian Moore sends it back to where it came from. And not many of those that this Tennessee offense will miss. The balls came into today hitting over 300 as a team. Second best in the SEC with that 329 mark. 44 home runs, second in the nation. Add four more to that. So that's 48 long balls in what is now the 18th game of the season. Tennessee and Auburn, the only two teams in the SEC to have a home run in each of their games this year. Second out of the inning is recorded as Bargo flies out. Reese Chapman pinch hitting here for Tennessee. Chapman making his 12th appearance of the season. Has started five games for the Vols. Four for his first 16 offensively, so hitting 250. Does have a homer. And as he hits in place of Billy Amick in the three spot in the fourth. Had a nice game this past weekend. Went three for four with two runs and six RBIs after hitting his first ever grand slam in the sixth inning. Has hit well to right, but hung in the air for Nunnally, who corrals it while crashing in. But six more runs come across. Hey, well, Higher, 
New pitcher into the game for Tennessee, the right-hander, Marcus Phillips takes over. Sophomore from South Dakota, Phillips making his fifth appearance of the season. No record, but he does have a save. Got that in the series opener against Illinois. Sterling triple zero ERA. In four innings of work, just one hit. Two walks to five strikeouts. And what has been a cleanly pitched ball game by this Tennessee staff, it was Xander Freak, Sechrist, then Chris Damos, and now Phillips in here in the fifth. Heart of the order, ball one inside to Max Williams. I think Phillips is a nice weapon that Tennessee can pull out of their bullpen every now and then for a few innings. Brings the heat, you know, mid, mid 90s. Also, I mean, so much movement on the ball and, and he's done great so far. The few appearances that he's made, I think that, you know, Tennessee could actually utilize him maybe a little bit more often. I think he's got the stuff. Yeah, certainly a guy Tennessee is high on. Just kind of following into that innings competition. They've got so many good arms in the back end of this bullpen. First year transfer from Iowa Western in Phillips. As he loses the first batter he faces, Williams is aboard. That's the first base runner for EKU since the second inning. Double play depth up the middle as Boone Chevy strides into the box. Take strike one. Taking some speed off of that one for strike one. Sometimes all it takes is just, you know, getting that first pitch in there. Bounced on the right side and through. Past the outstretch, Radke Laurie fresh into the game. That's a hit for Boone Chevy. Two on to begin the fifth. Chevy gets on top of the ball, and Brad Kilori just unable to get to it. Nice effort, though, with the dive. So two on, nobody out for Larail. Who, prior to that Boone Chevy single, had the lone hit for Eastern Kentucky. Colonels with two on, nobody out. One one count on Laurel, senior from Orlando in his second season playing up in Richmond. Transferred in most recently from 
State College of Florida. High bouncer on the left side. Chapman not in time. Infield bouncy ball single, and the bags are loaded. It's a really tough play there for Ethan Payne. I mean, that ball gets a high hop on it. He has to just try to come through it. Just a little too late, so bases are loaded now for DJ Sullivan. That is one thing that you're going to see with turf. When the ball hits off of it just right, it is going to bounce. Quickly, nothing and two here on Sullivan. It felt like it hung up in the sky forever after that first hop. Yeah, and I mean, as an infielder, there really isn't anything that you can do except you know, just wait for it to come down and then try to get it out of the glove as quickly as you can. So EKU with a little life here in the fifth. Two balls and two strikes to Sullivan, who was one of the leading extra base hitters for the Colonels last season. Big spot here, 2-2. Two -two. We'll run it back. Hit hard through the right side. That's going to score a run, maybe more. Williams is in. Station to station for EKU, and the Colonels on the board in the fifth. Colonels deciding they did not want to be shut out in this game. They wanted to make it a little interesting. Again, this ball just hitting that right side gap. outside to Ron Franklin. So it's the fifth RBI of the year for Sullivan. Keeps the bases loaded, nobody out yet. I think that's the toughest stat right there is that yeah. there's no outs for Marcus Phillips. That ball gets away. A new catcher into the game, Charlie Taylor, the junior took over. And another run comes in to score. Chevy plates the second EKU run of the night. Everybody up 90 feet. So Larail at third, Sullivan at second. Still nobody out. And a 2 0 count to Ron Franklin. Up until this point, EKU has only been shut out one time. That was that first matchup against Kentucky. They lost 10 to nothing, but the rest of their games, they've scored at least one or two runs. Going to keep that rolling here against Tennessee tonight. A couple of runs across, still nobody out in the fifth. On the appeal to first, he went around. So strike three. And out number one. Coach Vitello making his way out to the mound now. Nice pitch by Phillips. Down and away on that outside corner. So he finishes his outing with a strikeout. New pitcher coming into the game for Tennessee. The mustache man himself, Kirby Connell, will take over in just a moment. A couple of runs come across for EKU, now a 13-2 game in the fifth. And it's this call to the bullpen is presented by Stowers Caterpillar, East Tennessee's heavy equipment dealer for over 60 years. Jordan 
attention please, now pitching for Tennessee. Number 35, Kirby Third left-hander of the night for Tennessee. And this one, one with experience. Kirby Connell takes over here in the fifth, and it is appearance number six this season for the Southpaw. 1-0 record, does have a save at 4.26 ERA. Shut the door in that midweek win against Southern Indiana. Three scoreless to close the books and pick up the save his last time out. Begins with a strike to Anger Adrianza. With runners on second and third, one out here in the top of the fifth. Honestly, these types of situations are what Kirby Cannell does best. He comes in and he usually slams the door. He's really great at throwing strikes, getting ahead in counts like he is right now. And striking people out, that is what he does. He comes into tough situations and he makes things happen. I think it's the power of the mustache. <laughs> three pitches, three strikes. Beautiful pitch just runs away from that lefty. Top of the order, Colby Ott. Oh for two tonight, strikeout and a fly out for Ott. As the Colonels got onto the board for the first time here in this fifth, two runs across against Marcus Phillips. Ball and a strike. <laughs> Coach Vitello said that Kirby Cannell, he comes into the games and he turns things around. He changes the tide, gets the momentum back on the side of the Volunteers. He retires the two players he faces there in relief. Closes the door, we head to the home fifth, 13 to two Tennessee.
A lot of long balls tonight for the fifth ranked team of the country. It started with Hunter Ensley going the other way in the second. Dylan Dryling to left. That was torched from Kavaris Tears. And then Christian Moore with the fourth long ball of the night. As Tennessee he has exploded for 13 runs. He carries an 11 run lead into the fifth. Offensive explosion from so many different players in this lineup. It's incredible to think that, I mean, this team, just everything that they've been able to do, not only hit the long ball, but then just pass the bat. They're great at situational hitting as well. We saw that from Kavaris Tears earlier. Really good job at pitch recognition. They really don't swing at a lot of junk balls. They sit and wait for their pitches. Ethan Payne getting his first rip of the night. Payne came on as a defensive replacement in the top of the fifth over a third. Four for eight in his limited offensive sample size. So that's clean 500. He's driven home a couple. Fifth year from Memphis. You love when your starters are able to put a bunch of runs on the board early in the game so that you can get those guys off the bench and get them some experience. You never know what's going to happen later on in postseason, so you want to try to get as many guys as much opportunity as possible so that everyone feels comfortable when they step into the game. Payne drives one to center field. Franklin really didn't have to move. One out. <laughs> One down here in the home fifth. Robin Villeneuve back up. Brian Yates continues to work on the bump. Came on last inning in relief for EKU. That one is between the numbers. Villeneuve aboard for the second time tonight. Second time, the Volunteers have been hit this game. This pitch coming in right there at the hip. Now batting the left fielder, number 20, Colby Hackett. We've already spoken about this, but wild pitches and free passes, something that we've seen a few times now from the EKU pitching staff. So one on with one out for Colby Backus. Well out in front, nothing in one. Backus, the redshirt junior from Johnson City. Redshirted after coming out of Walter State. Just up the road in Morristown. The Senators always one of the top JUCO teams in the country. It was a second team All-American up there, Backus. Help them make a run to the Final Four. Lost ball. Dylan Dab the second. It's nice having a, a competitive JUCO just right down the road. I'm sure makes recruiting for Coach Vitello pretty nice. <laughs> just drive down the road and pick you out a few good players. And there's never a shortage. No, definitely not. Back is fooled by a couple of breaking balls there. He's down on strikes. That's the first for Yates. Now batting the shortstop, number 23, Dean Curley. Breaks down and away. It's back is swinging and missing. Two outs already, probably one of the most efficient innings so far, other than the hit by pitch for the EKU pitching staff. Yeah, so far the only one where Tennessee has not scored. Balls have scored one, one, five, and six in their halves of the first four innings. Quickly, nothing in one here on Dean Curley. What impresses you the most about him? So many things, just I think the number one thing though is the maturity that he plays with as just a freshman. 
It's tail and foul, not only racing over, but Curley lives to see another pitch. And coming in as the true freshman and has taken over at shortstop. Captain of the infield in Curley, and he's the reigning SEC freshman of the week. Had a career night one week ago tonight. Three homers against the Kansas State Wildcats, a grand slam, a three-run homer, a two-run shot, and he was a foot away from a solo homer. Rain was coming down, he hit it back into the breeze. As that is ripped to center field, but hangs up for Franklin. And the book is closed on the fifth. Really nice inning there, efficient from Ryan Yates on the bump. We've played five, all falls in Knoxville. Pitcher into the game, the redshirt freshman Brady Robertson out of Humboldt, Tennessee, takes over for the Volunteers here in the sixth. And for Robertson on the bump, finally getting into some action here in the orange and white. Did not play last season and has not gotten in yet this year. So this is the first collegiate appearance for Brady Robinson. Super exciting, the freshman. First time on the mound as a volunteer. You always wonder, you know, how are the emotions right now? Are they high or is he under control? Is he feeling the nerves? You know, what's going on through his head right now? Didn't play last year, got the red shirt after starring at Trinity Christian over in West Tennessee. And his first pitch as a volunteer is a strike. Nothing in one on Tate Nunnally, the right fielder. Trinity Christian, a small private Christian school in Jackson, Tennessee, has actually produced a few good volunteer players, two of them being Ivy and Ellen Renfro from Tennessee, yeah. softball pitchers. Fantastic as Lady Vols in their careers. Coming in, throwing strikes. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, 6'3, 199. Yeah, that's an opposite field single. Nunnally with his first hit of the night. Not a bad pitch, just kind of gets it off the end of the barrel there and pushes it in that 5-6 hole. So the second straight inning with some immediate action for EKU as Davis takes a ball. Connor Davis, 0 for 2, ground down to fly out in this one. 
Double play depth up the middle. That's the 1-0. And it's in there for a strike. Robertson has some pretty impressive high school accolades. Rated a top 500 prospect by Perfect Game and the number six overall player in the state of Tennessee. Pretty good linebacker too. Yeah, I love a dual sport athlete. What do you remember from your first collegiate outing? I was extremely nervous. <laughs> um, I don't remember if this was my first collegiate outing, but uh, was pitching against Tennessee Tech. I know that was one of my first outings. Yeah. I can't remember if it was my very first, but the nerves really just, they had me. What another day for Queso. First strikeout of the collegiate career. Fantastic pitch by Robertson. I know he's got to be feeling pretty good about that one. First career strikeout. So one down for Max Williams. Off the hands to the left and caught by Ensley, the center fielder taking control. Nice run by Ensley. Probably could have given that up to left field, but love to see the effort and the hustle from him. And that's what you got to do as an outfield. Like, even if you know that you can get to that ball, if your center fielder calls it off, you let him have it because he's the leader out there. Tony Vitello out to make a pitching change. So the first collegiate outing in the books. Brady Robertson. New arm coming into the game for the Volunteers. Two down here in the top of the six. We'll tell you about him on the other side. As this call in the bullpen is presented by Stowers Caterpillar. He's Tennessee's heavy equipment dealer for over 60 years. Your attention, please. Now pitching for Tennessee, number 45, Matthew Kellett. Sixth pitcher of the night is the freshman left-hander, Matthew Dallas out of Memphis. Dallas making his fifth appearance of the season. Does have a couple starts this year, but now his third appearance in relief. No record, 0.00 ERA. Six innings of work. Has issued eight walks to six strikeouts. Comes on with two out and one runner on here in the top of the six. Tennessee leading by 11. Dallas has not pitched since Sunday of the Bowling Green series, so two Sundays ago. Gets the ball trying to wrap up the top half of the sixth. Matthew Dallas definitely has good stuff. He can move the ball. He's got good velocity. The walks is going to be the issue. That is something that we've seen from him. Just struggling to throw strikes sometimes, but honestly, that kind of comes with being a freshman and learning this sure. college zone and figuring out uh, the umpires. Everyone is different. Sometimes they're really tight. Sometimes they have a little bit of a wider zone. Yeah. 
Two balls and no strikes to Boone Chevy, the catcher. Chevy, one for two, singled and scored the two EKU runs, came across last inning in the fifth. And Dallas had a terrific preps career at Briarcrest Christian. Another one of those guys that came in with high accolades, third ranked pitcher in the state of Tennessee. Just getting his feet underneath him in his young college career. Two and one. I think that's the most common thing that I see from pitchers in their freshman year is just learning how to throw strikes against really high caliber hitters at this level and then also learning the zone. It's very common to see pitchers kind of struggle a little bit early on trying to figure those things out. 2-2, two -two, Dallas has it spoiled. has turned into a cool, clear night, and the breeze has died down. Crowd on its feet. The payoff pitch, strike three, swinging. Matthew Dallas does his job in relief. Dallas attacking the zone here, getting the swing and miss for the strikeout. Out number three. Tennessee leads 13-2 going into the bottom of the sixth. If you guess number 11, Billy Avid, you got the right answer. Congratulations to our lucky winner, Matthew Reed. Stopped by the great Cliff and HQ table to claim your prize. New pitcher into the game for EKU. It is Addison Stockham, the left-handed freshman, who faces Charlie Taylor. Stockham making his second appearance of the season. The only other was on Saturday against Wright State. Charlie Taylor getting his first crack at the plate. Came on a couple innings ago defensively. Taylor looking for his first hit of the season. There it is, drives it the other way as Charlie Taylor leads off with a single in the home sixth. Oh, 
Taylor punches that ball to right center field. His first hit leading off with a single and now Hunter High stepping up to the plate for the Volunteers. Now the High, the freshman from the Mid-State, prepped at Lipscomb Academy. Sixth game of the year off the bench for High. Two for seven, that adds up to 286, and that'll get higher. Rip down the right field line. Two aboard to begin the Tennessee sixth. Now batting the second baseman, number six, Reggie Laurie. Great job by High, this team getting players off the bench and them doing a job. I love it. I love when you pull players off the bench and they come in and they're aggressive and they're swinging. Sometimes you get, you know, pinch hitters coming in and they allow the nerves to take over. They try to do too much, try to be a, a hero in, in some sense. Bradke Laurie's turn. Also came in a couple innings ago defensively. So Lori, the junior from Florida. Juco transfer, Lori. One for his first 13. So trying to get going offensively. Has two on with nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth. And I think you make a great point, Kalen. Shows that depth of the roster for Tennessee for sure. And then maybe just the eagerness from the guys that are getting off the bench. Say, hey. I could play some more if you need me to. Right. Well, Coach Vitello spoke to that. He said that there's always going to be opportunities for guys to get in the lineup throughout the entire season. And, I mean, it's, it's a great problem to have, you know, to have that many guys who can come off the bench and do a job. Foul back three and two. Now Vitello now in year number seven leading this Tennessee team. They've been to the College World Series two of the last three years, including last season. Base is loaded. Your attention, please. Pinch hitting for Tennessee. Number 10, Cal Stark. Cal Stark. Into pinch hit here with the bases loaded. Stark hitting 176, getting into his 11th game of the season. I had to do a double take that that was actually Cal Stark because you know walk-up song was on from Texas. He's oh, yeah. <laughs> from Knoxville, played at Farragut on the west side of town. Started collegially at Weatherford College before making his way to Rocky Top. So I'll have to ask Cal about that one. That is cranked. And gone. Grand slam off the bench. Cal Stark touch them all. I mean, I'm like speechless. <laughs> that ball was absolutely murdered by Cal Stark. We can see he's really turning a corner here offensively. I mean, gracious, off the barrel, you know, that is a no doubter. Cleared everything. A grand slam. Incredible, incredible for Cal Stark. So happy for him. Coach Vitello talked about just having numerous talks with him about getting better. He said we, we just had constant talks about getting better, how to do that, working on our swing in the cage. He said he had a good fall and he had a lot of success at his other school, but this is a completely different landscape. And he said he had to figure that out and just raise the standard. And 
that's what he's doing. And you can see with that grand slam, he has definitely raised the standard. No, no doubt about it. Second home run of the season for Cal Stark. He's now driven home 10 and made it a two touchdown lead. And that's a 15 run cushion for Tennessee as the Colonels go back to the bullpen. Still nobody out here in the sixth. batting the right fielder, number 13, Reese Chapman. Left-hander Quentin Hall comes on for EKU. The junior from Vandalia, Ohio. As he faces Reese Chapman, getting his second at-bat off the plate, off the bench for Chapman. Two balls and no strikes. Hall making his fifth appearance of the season. Just his second in relief with three prior starts. So on the hook for an 0-4 record early in this year. It's an EKU team that will turn its attention to conference play, trying to compete in the A-Sun. They were picked seventh in the preseason. And it's been a tough start out of the gates for the Colonels, no doubt about it, but they've certainly tested themselves. Road Series at Auburn, Vanderbilt in the, mid, Vanderbilt in the midweek, a couple of midweeks against the Kentucky Wildcats, and then here they are here in Knoxville. Sometimes I wonder about testing your team. I know you want to do that early on in the season, but I wonder how much is, is too much. When does it become a situation where you've hurt the confidence of your team rather than just, you know, tried to get them ready for conference play by testing them? Yeah, that's a good point. Chapman aboard there with an infield single. You look at the rest of the schedule, this is really the last big opponent that EKU is facing. So they've got that gauntlet out of the way early, but look, there's no, no way around it. It's beat them up early. Definitely. I mean, and losing is not fun. <laughs> so I know, I just wonder, like, morale-wise, right. you know, do they look at it like, okay, we're facing these really high-quality teams. I mean, we're, we're getting beat and getting run rules, but... Uh, are we looking at it like that, or are we looking at it as a learning experience? Sure. So I always wonder about that. Ethan Payne takes ball two. Second crack for Payne. He flied out his first time up. Yeah, EKU begins conference play at Central Arkansas this weekend. Tennessee starts its conference slate in Tuscaloosa at Alabama on Friday night.
three balls and a strike. Still nobody out here in the sixth. Couple of singles and a walk loaded up the bases before Cal Stark came in to pinch it and promptly unloaded the bases. Payne drives it to center field, hanging in the air for Franklin. And there is the first out. Payne has hit two balls now to that part of the field so deep. I know Coach Vitello in one of his post-game interviews said something about a player and wishing they had eaten all of their cinnamon toast crunch <laughs> that morning for a little extra <laughs> strength. I think probably he's saying that about Ethan Payne right now. Need some of that young lady's popcorn out there in the stands. Exactly. Robin Villadev back in. One for three. Singleton scored back in the fourth. He was hit by pitch his last time up. And in an 0-2 hole here. Hall looking for out number two. the end of the bat there, Villeneuve, just a little too far out in front of it. Double play depth up the middle. The lefty fires. Foul ball. Strong crowd staying put here in Knoxville. Lindsey Nelson Stadium still buzzing. It's going to become one of the premier facilities in college baseball when all the construction is wrapped up. Right now, official capacity to take over 5,500. That'll stretch to a neighborhood of 8,000 come the 2025 season. At least that's the plan. This ball gets away and allows Chapman 90 extra feet. Love seeing the support from the fans staying late for their team. I know it probably helps. It is spring break for a <laughs> lot of schools around here. And so those kids able to watch their favorite team, not have to worry about bedtime. That's right. Go get another soda. <laughs> staying up late. They've been treated well today by this Tennessee offense. Really good pitching, too. Oh, my gosh, yeah. It's been great all around from this Tennessee team. Villeneuve fighting at the plate. Tennessee team that has won 15 in a row. It's the second longest active streak in Division I right now. Texas A&M Aggies have won 16 straight. It's actually the third longest, tied for the third longest winning streak in program history. Ninth pitch of the battle. We'll see a 10th. Lone loss of the year for Tennessee was back in its opening weekend. They were playing down in Texas in the Shriners Children's College Showdown at the Rangers ballpark. They won extra innings against Oklahoma. Ended up losing 5-1 in 10. And what ended up being a wacky end in that game against the Sooners. And Villeneuve failed out there. Villeneuve knows. <laughs> That one's coming in. He just stands there and takes it. Doesn't even try to get out of the way. He actually <laughs> turns his hip into it. Yeah, yeah, moved into the way. He says, I've already been hit here once. What's the second time going to hurt? <laughs> All right, two on with one out. Back to Colby Backus. Went down swinging his first time up. There's a strike, nothing in two. Tough spot for Johnson. For Quentin Hall to come here into the game and try and wrap up this tough sixth inning. Backus 
Skies it to right, that is down. And the inning will continue, loaded once again on a bloop single. It's tough right there, that ball just hit into no man's land. Runners not exactly sure what to do, so they hold up, just smart base running. See if it's gonna get caught and then able to advance. It's a tough luck single against Quentin Hall and the bases are loaded. Your attention please, big kitty for Tennessee, number 46, Brayden Sharp. Chance for a new bat. Braden Sharp, the freshman. Takes strike one. Second time this season, Sharp is appearing in a game. Just his second career at bat. Looking for his first collegiate hit. He's in an 0-2 hole, and yeah, it goes down swinging. Strikeout for Quentin Hall on the bump. Two outs, bases loaded. Charlie Taylor. Charlie Taylor. Taylor, the 10th batter of the half inning. He started it all with a single. As Hall fires, strike one. Fans not too happy about that pitch call. Two and two. On oh, the two, two. And it takes ball three. So a full count with two out, the base is loaded. We'll get this merry go round spinning early. And the payoff. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Quinton Hall on the bump. Brings the inning to a close, but four runs come across thanks to a Cal Star Grand Slam. Last licks, Colonels need some life to extend the contest past the set. attention to the video board and keep your eye on the baseball for tonight's shuffle, presented by Fox Booting and Storage. Tennessee, New pitcher into the game for Tennessee. It is another freshman getting a trip to the hill. As Luke Payne takes over, the left-hander. 
From the Mid-State, Gallatin, Tennessee, freshman making just his second appearance of the season. Another one was against you all with the early in the year. So one inning of work. That inning did have a couple of strikeouts, but also two walks and a run that came across. So ERA right now at nine. But a chance here in the seventh. Tennessee up by more than 10. The run rule is in effect tonight. So Eastern Kentucky needs to play six for this one to continue. A couple of defensive changes for Tennessee. As Hunter High comes in to play left, Colby Backus moves over to center field. And Ariel Antigua getting the reps over at shortstop in to replace Dean Curley. First pitch of the seventh is a swinging strike. As EKU has gone to the bench, that is Mari Deserano, the freshman, switch hitter. Goes quickly in an 0-2 hole. I love that Luke Payne has come out and just fired two strikes right in there. That's what you want to see from your freshman. Make it three strikes. Three strikes. Love that. I tell you, Tennessee, they have a bright future ahead of them with their young pitchers. Got some really good freshmen coming out of the bullpen. Christian Ascona, pinch hitting. The freshman. Ascona has appeared once before, 0 for 2, looking for his first hit of the year and his young collegiate career. That might be the farthest right foul ball off a of left-hander in this park. That was incredible. <laughs> Get it that deep into the concourse over there. One one from Payne. Go the other way. Everybody clap your hands. Payne downhill with his 2-2. Two -two. Strike three call. That's two okay. strikeouts That's for the freshman. This pitch right there on the corner. Beautiful. 91 dotted up, that will do. Flip back and foul. Off the bat of Elijah Underhill. Another freshman getting in. Fifth game of the year for Underhill. Still looking for that first hit. Star two point. Sport athlete in his home state of Kentucky in high school. 1-1 one, one to him. Jam shot. This could do it. Over on the right side, it is caught by Villeneuve, and the ball game Tennessee is over. Game. Okay, with another dominant victory here for Tennessee, and the Volunteers now won 16 in a row. It's incredible, some unstoppable power at the plate from the balls today. Multiple home runs and a grand slam from Cal Stark. Offensively exploding and then on the mound, 
we saw some great performances from several different arms today. So Tennessee has won 16 in a row, improves to 17 and one on the season as they move into conference play this weekend. For Kaylin Arnold, our wonderful crew led by Bryson Wright in the truck tonight, Mike Patel saying so long from Knoxville, an exclamation mark win for the Vols.